Hello and welcome to this lecture for on the Earth Radiative Budget. It will be uh, a starting point uh, to talk about the, the regulation of the temperature in our atmosphere. And with this lecture, which will be short, we'll just go over the basics of radiation and in fact, in terms of uh, the basics of light and wavelength. We have already talked in our previous lecture about the solar radiation and the in some way we looked at the energy being provided by solar radiation and the energy being received on the Earth. At this point, I want to mostly jump into the characteristic of this energy and see why, in fact, the solar energy hit our planet. When we look at, in fact, what's happening, we know that the, uh, there is energy coming from the sun and it's warming up our planet. We've seen, we've been able to calculate it. Uh, if there would be no atmosphere, no greenhouse gases, it would be a frozen planet at about minus 18 degrees Celsius. But thanks to our atmosphere containing some greenhouse gases, we are maintaining a temperature of the atmosphere of about plus 15 degrees naturally, without speaking about the current global warming. However, there is in fact a balance happening. If we look, in fact, what's happening, you do have two things. The sun sends us its energy and we're receiving. This is absorbed. I mean, what has, is not being reflected by the albedo is being absorbed by the surface. But imagine if the planet would just be absorbing energy over time. At some point, it would probably melt. It would make, I mean, catastrophic event would happen. So it has to find a balance, such as, you know, we eat. At some point, we have to go to a restaurant. Otherwise, well, that wouldn't be sustainable. So uh, with this nice picture, in fact, what's happening is the Earth also releasing some energy. And so we have the solar radiation that will be warming up the surface and what we call the terrestrial radiation that will be cooling down, releasing energy. The same as when you do some activities, you start feeling warming up and you will be sweating in some way to cool down your uh, temperature of the body. And so uh, in between the warming up and the cooling is in fact trapped, uh, are trapped different processes, different system uh, in which there will be exchange of energy between the atmosphere, the land and the ocean. And so this exchange, this system will exchange that energy that's being transferred from the sun and the energy being released by the earth. And so that would be, that is why we, we're focusing on that part for this course because, well, the hydrology, which is uh, mostly studying water, of course, we can think about the water on the ocean, but there is also water in the atmosphere and water on land. So those transfer of energy directly impact on the hydrology on our planet. And so at this point, uh, we saw that the main energy source and uh, cooling and warming is in fact happening through radiation. However, there are also two other processes as we talked the previous time that are convection or conduction. Electromagnetic radiation are, is the one supplying its most energy. Convection happen when in the ocean and the atmosphere, when you have contact between molecules providing this transfer of heat from one to the other. Conduction, conduction happen with crowns, for example, on touch when it, you have contact, physical contact happening. And so with that in mind, the fact that radiation, electronic, electro, sorry, electromagnetic radiation are uh, the main provider of energy on our planets. And in fact, in all the other planets, we are just going to focus on this part for now. And so what is, in fact, electromagnetic radiation? You may have some memory about that. It is, in fact, simplified as a an oscillation, if you have to represent it as an oscillation. And this oscillation can have different characteristics. We can specifically looking at two characteristics, what we would call a long wavelength. As you can see, that means that those oscillations are spread apart over a specific distance versus a short wavelength that for the same distance, you have many more oscillations. OK, so the wavelength is, in fact, looking at the uh, distance between two peaks of oscillation. And long wavelengths mean that you have a long distance between two peaks. Meanwhile, short wavelengths mean that you have short distance. And we can see that because you are fixing the distance in terms of frequency, how many oscillations you observe, a long wavelength will have a low frequency. On this example, 
the long wavelength is happening four times. If we compare it with the short wavelength right here, the oscillation happened six times. So it has a higher frequency. It's being repeated more times than this one. How does it concern this topic? Well, in fact, high energy means that you're compacting more wavelengths together. By compacting, compressing in some way, you're accumulating more energy. So the high energy short wavelengths usually contain more energy. Meanwhile, low energy long wavelengths contain less energy. And, well, spoiler alert, but the, long, the short wave the short wavelengths usually would be the wavelengths coming from the sun having a higher energy level. Meanwhile, the long wavelengths having a lower energy wavelength will be coming out from the earth. So we can see already the tendency of the sun providing us high energy content. Meanwhile, the earth is releasing low energy content. And we'll see why that in just a little bit. In fact, I speak about the wavelength, the frequency, both together are in fact related by an equation that in fact by multiplying the wavelength times the frequency, you have the speed of light. What does it mean in fact that as soon as you're increasing the wavelength, you have to uh, reduce the frequency. It's just because the wavelength and the frequency uh, times the frequency are equal to a constant, which is the speed of light. So this number is fixed, 3, 10 to the 8 meter per second. And that means that if you're changing, you're increasing, for example, that one, while well, the other one has to go down, and vice versa. If you're decreasing that one, the frequency will go up. OK, so it goes back to what I say. Long wavelength has a low frequency. Short wavelength has a high frequency. So it's anti-correlated. Anti so. Do we have different wavelengths? Yeah, of course, in fact. We do have a couple of different uh, wavelengths depending on the number of oscillations. So depending if you're speaking about short wavelengths and high, uh, long wavelengths. So we can say right here, those are long wavelengths, those are short one. And remember in terms of energy, you should expect the short one to be having the highest energy. Meanwhile, the long one will have the lowest energy, okay? So for example, gamma rays, those that suppose have turned, uh, I forgot, Bruce, whatever, to Hulk, well, those are very high energy content. In fact, pretty bad, so bad that they can penetrate to the atomic nuclei and so, in fact, modify your DNA and that's, it will not transform you into a Hulk, but definitely uh, endanger any type of life. And as we move to X-rays, UVs, visible infrared, microwave, and finally radio, we're moving towards lower energy content wavelengths. Okay, and in the figures right here, it shows what those wavelengths are able to go through. I mean, what is in fact the level of penetration of those wavelengths? So gamma rays can go up to the nuclei. X-rays will go up to the atoms. For example, visible, mostly up to microorganism. For example, and radio, well, you may have experienced that when you're driving uh, with your car, with buildings and big structure, those might be obstacles for those wavelengths to go through. Okay. Final thing to mention, you may see the correlation between the wavelength and the temperature, which is going back to my point between the sun and the earth. The sun tend to be high in temperature, about 6,000 degrees Kelvin, right here, more or less maybe a bit more. So we definitely are in the visible. The Earth is colder, is in fact about 200 and something Kelvin, so maybe more in this way. And as you can see, the Earth emitting the infrared as a consequence. Okay, so the temperature is related to the type of emission uh, you the something provides. And we will see that in just a little bit. Um, so, from our point of interest, we're looking really at what's happening with the sun. And so most of the sun energy will be released in the visible light, which is why us and most of the animals has have a sight uh, in the visible because we adapted to that type of light. 
and so um, but however the sun as you can see goes a little bit further than the visible and then the earth will be in the infrared low energy type okay so going back to the previous slide we're mostly in our system between the sun and the earth we're mostly looking at that only this portion of the spectrum the full electromagnetic spectrum okay so mention about the fact that temperature and the wavelength uh, of uh, radiation are, uh, are related together. There is in fact a law that you will be using for your homework, uh, which is what we call the Planck's radiation law. It's given by this crazy, freaky equation, but don't freak out. What does it mean is the fact that the emission emission of a body such as a planet uh, at a specific wavelength, so you have to fix the wavelength, at is, is in fact a function of temperature. And that, to calculate that emission at a specific wavelength for a temperature, you will have to have on the numerator two times h, which is a constant of Planck, given right here, times c, c is a speed of light, right there, to the square. And you need to divide that by your wavelength. Express, be careful when you do that, the wavelength is expressed in meter. Most of the time it will be given in nanometers or micrometer. You'll have to make the conversion. Be careful with that. This wavelength is to the power of five times the exponential of H, again, the constant of Planck, times C, the speed of light, times uh, divided by the wavelength, sorry, wavelength, times the constant of Boltzmann given right here, times the temperature, the temperature, remember in those equations are given in Kelvin, minus one, okay? So that's an equation that we will be using for the homework. And you will see, we'll build some uh, graphics from that. If in fact we're using that equation, we are able to build those kind of curve right here that show you the emission at different wavelengths. So this is, in fact, this equation has been repeating over and over and over and over, depending on the wavelength, at a fixed temperature. And you can see that by increasing the temperature, you're increasing the energy, the irradiance, in fact, provided the sun is, in fact, above that. And you can kind of focusing the emission towards the most visible uh, wavelength. And so that's giving something like that. I mean, those are more actual data with the sun radiation and with the earth radiation right here, the terrestrial radiation. This comes from the black body uh, law, which, give, which say that a body at a specific temperature will emit a specific wavelength. Okay, that's related to something we saw in the previous lecture and related to uh, the, low plan, the, the Planck's law that I just announced before. Okay, so to provide you a better picture, this is what we observe. We observe the solar spectrum right here in mostly the visible. In fact, about 50% of all the energy sent by the sun is found in the visible. The rest is on the side, as you can see, part of the integration. Uh, and 99% of all the energy from the sun goes from 0.3 to 4 micrometers. At comparison, the Earth is way smaller be careful, there is a break in the axis because you're going from 0 0.5, 0 0.6 to 5, 15, 20, 25 micrometer. So this is in fact way on the tails and we're just cutting a portion of it. And you can see a uh, wide difference, but also be careful on the scale. This is in fact 24 watt per uh, square meter per micrometer. Meanwhile, right here, you're on the 10 to power of seven. So, I mean, in fact, that would be something like that and almost a flat line for the earth, okay? So um, this scale has been in fact uh, zoomed in to show you the emission of the long wave radiation from the earth versus the short wave radiation from the sun, okay? So short wave meaning high energy and that's from the sun, okay. Meanwhile, this one, long radiation, mean low energy, and that's from the Earth. Okay. All right. Last slide 
to introduce you one last law and the fact that temperature is directly related to the wavelength. It's in fact an equation that is pretty simple, has been based on experiment and observation. And so what it means, it's giving you that for a specific temperature, you have a lambda max, which is, if I'm going back to the previous drawing, this means that for a specific, let's say, wavelength right here, a specific wavelength, a, a specific temperature, you will have a specific lambda max right here. So this equation for a specific temperature will provide you the lambda max here, the maximum of emission you can observe. A specific temperature of Earth will provide you the lambda max right there. So that is what we call the Wayne uh, law. And it's given with this equation that lambda max is equal at 2897, which is a constant divided by T. With that, you can easily calculate the maximum wavelength for the solar and terrestrial radiation. If you take the temperature of the sun of 6,000 Kelvin and the temperature of the earth of 288 Kelvin, you find out by doing the calculation that the lambda max of the sun will be around the 0.4 uh, 0.483 micrometers, which is equivalent to 483 nanometers, okay? And for the Earth, you see that the lambda max is way higher. Remember, you expect that because it's a longer wavelength and it's at 10.05 micrometer. So those allows you to do the reverse. If you have the lambda max, you can calculate the temperature of a planet, for example, of an object. Okay, so with that, we are done with this portion of the lecture uh, and we'll do some exercise related to emission, uh, wavelength, and temperature in class. See you later.